as we're doing these drills and going through correcting some type of arm action issue, whatever it may be, uh, we definitely want to make throws with the baseball as well and start integrating the whole field to it. So there may be a two week period or something where we're working mainly with plyo balls uh, for a number of reasons. One, they feel different. Whenever you grab this, you're much more likely to do the same motion that you've done since you were two or three years old whenever you start throwing. Uh, two, the different weights of the ball is usually help with constraints and help you adjust to different weighted balls and, and the change will actually help your motor control uh, over time instead of just grabbing the same thing over and over again. So uh, for those reasons, we really, really like the plyo balls for making arm action changes. We still want you throwing with the regular baseball. So for these, we can do the same sort of thing. If we're finding a lot of good success, starting from this position and just throwing and, and feeling that, that limpiness and that looseness from this position, and we know that our elbow, we're presetting the elbow and the hand in a good position, and then feeling the hip, the front hip uh, rotate, feeling the front hip here, turn, and helping you throw, and we can start there. Again, we don't want to just cookie cut this and say 10 throws here, 10 throws here, 5 throws there. We want to help people feel it out and so that we can make better adjustments that actually translate to when we get back on the mound as opposed to just doing drills for the sake of doing drills and then we pick up baseball throw regular and we go right back to doing this. So we can do the same things with the baseball, whatever helps the most. Do some throws starting here, do some throws starting here, we're coming back and then going through the motion from there. And then eventually we want to feel like the hand drops. And again, if it's like a curveball, I throw a spike curve. So if we're thinking that motion more, we're a neutral grip, like we would throw it out in front here. And that helps you a lot, where you're just separating or we're presetting that grip. That's one way to do it. Uh, talk to someone through the majors, had some pretty good success, where they actually cock their wrist. I don't think that's for everyone, but it's worked really well for that particular person. If you cock your wrist, it's really hard, you can't really drop and do that at the same time, you're much more likely to fall in place. Uh, the other idea is just that we'll be able to get the elbow or keep the hand above the elbow. So if we're doing this, David Price, Trevor Bauer, Gilito, the guys with short arm actions do this really well. So they feel the elbow's making a little bit more of the circle and the elbow's going back and down, but the hand's staying a little bit more neutral and the elbow's staying a little bit, have, has a little bit of flexion in it the whole time. We're not really straightening out the arm. That should allow us to get into that uh, loaded scap position. Again, it's horizontal AB induction, so the scap's retracting, and we're able to turn from here and throw. Uh, one great way to progress is vary the speed and the intensity of the throws. If we get the ball and we try to throw as hard as we can right away, it's much more difficult to uh, have quality when we're trying to move as fast as we can. Our body adjusts by consciously doing it right and slower and feeling these positions and learning these positions and then speeding up as we go. So if you want to go to the full arm action and it's feeling really weird to you, slow it down. You'll transfer uh, what we're learning from the ball throws and the drills into your real throwing motion by slowing down, feeling those positions uh, and taking it slow that way as opposed to trying to rush through it and going at full speed right off the bat.